Hi, Dave here, and welcome to part one of five of my F1 tractor tutorials. Now I'm making this because this is genuinely my favorite add-on of any DJ controllers for any DJ software. I absolutely love it, and it's very underrated. We're gonna go geek, geek level on this. We're gonna go through all the ins and outs of what each button does on video one today. Plus we're gonna look at all the other features throughout the series of the videos. So let's take a look. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Native Instruments website. If you haven't already got these, go to your products. I like to do it like this, where I go to Tractor, and then I'm going to go to F1. Then I'm going to say Tractor Remix Sets, and then your free remix sets. Here's your download link, and I'm going to drop this into the description below, so don't worry too much about this, but just so you know, this is where you get it from. Then once it's downloaded, just drag the folder directly into Track Collection, and it'll instantly recognize it as a Remix deck, and then we can pop it in there. You can also see the Remix decks by these 16 dots here. That's how they show it. Now, once we've got them in here, we need to know what the hell a Remix deck is. So let's change this to a Remix deck. And what we can see here is the top level looks yeah, pretty much the same apart from this button up here. And then we've got a sync and master. But if we keep hovering over things, you can see things flash up. Then you can see 16 cells in here and then 16, 16, 16. So what we've got is 64 cells in a deck. Now these cells are unlimited, so you could put in a whole song or a mix if you wanted to. You could be the world's laziest DJ and have 256 songs in your decks and you could just literally play one then the other then the other then the other but that's boring we don't want to do that let's get creative first thing we can do is load up a remix set so let's pop over to our f1 and we can hit browse you can see we can drag this in and i'm going to load up something let's load up a bit of jungle click take it off browse now you may not be able to see this but there are lights now that relate to the screen and all we have to do to play them is press it. But before we get too involved in that, we just need to do a couple of more things. So personally, I like to sync everything to the master clock. So if this is 170, I'm gonna call this 170. And we're going to also hit sync. And we've got our quantize on as well. We also want quantize on up here, and I'm just gonna have snap on because that's just the way I like it. Now, Quantize works slightly differently to this one up here. So it's the same as Ableton. So if anyone knows Ableton, so what we've got here are the beats. So if I choose four here, what's going to happen is if I, you see this counter here, these are your beats. So I'm going to go on the, say, two. And it will wait. And it waits for it to go round, same as if you're playing it, and you stop it. It'll then stop four beats. I personally like to have mine on one, and you can do this via the controller that I'm gonna show you in a second. Apart from that, everything else here is the same. And now what we can do with our remix decks is we can start building up layers. So we've got the sync on, so we can play. Now you can hear some of them are different levels, so we can always change them. I like to see the remix decks as four channel mixers. So we've got channel one, two, three, and four. That means we can control this side here with this volume and filter, this one here for volume and filter, volume and filter, volume and filter. And then that way what we can do is if we go back to what they were. Too loud. And we can change the levels as we would normally do on a normal deck. That means we can play anything we want in these cells, but we're limited to one this side, one this side, one this side, one this side. So we can't play two here 
but we could play two here and we can start them all at the same time. Then we can change something. And we can scroll down and we can choose another section of 16. And if there was more, we could do the other two here. As you can see on the controller, we have P1, P2, P3, P4, and they are your pages. Lots of P's. And if we start playing one, let's go for... We can hear the volume go down. And to stop them, we just hold shift and press the button down here. Now, if we press it and hit that, it actually mutes it. So as you can see, it's still grayed out there, but it still goes along. So we can take that off mute. Shift, stop, it goes back to the beginning. Then what we have on the left-hand side and right-hand side is we have these key lock effects, monitor and punch. So if we hold shift, we can put the key locks on on each channel. We can have effects on, so it can only affect, say, one. So say, for instance, we're playing these. As you can hear, the effects are just on the bass drum. Monitor is putting it into your headphones. Now, be warned, if you then press all four of those like that, and then you hit this, it all disappears. Don't know why, but it does. And lastly down here is punch. And what that means is it actually punches through so you don't lose your phrasings. So if we see this beat here, then go on to the next one. If you notice, it actually went to the beginning of the next one. So whenever we start one, So that all starts at the beginning, which is going to mess your phrasing up, especially if you've got your quantize on, say, one, and then we do it accidentally on a three, it's going to throw it right off. So if you have punch on this channel, for example, we can then go. Really nice little touch there. So that's your punch. Now let's go in depth into the middle buttons here. So we obviously have our sync and quantize, which we can turn on and off. If we hold quantize, we get lights up here and then you can move this around. You can see on the screen or you can just hit one. So that's the one. Gonna come back to catcher because that is the best button in the world ever. And then we have reverse. That's exactly what it does is it reverses it. So if we press a pad and hold reverse, what that does is, is it puts it into flux reverse, just like on the new Mark III controllers. The problem is there seems to be a bug in this. So what should happen is you press play, hold reverse, hold the pad, and it reverses in flux mode. But if you let go, it's going forwards, and then it stops, but it sounded like it's in reverse. And to get it back, you have to turn it off. Now that is the first time that's ever happened to me. So just remember that because this has never happened to me before and it's just typical while I'm making the video, that's what happens. However, what you need to do is hold reverse, pad, goes forwards when you let go, then it will then jump back to where it was. Typical, typical. Next we have type. So this can be used for lots of different things. And if you want a finger drum, this is one way of doing it as well. So you can choose type, you can then move forwards and you've got your PL. So your PL means one shots or loops. Green is loops, blue is one shot. So you can see change the beat. I can then turn that into a one shot, which means I can play it once. It'll go all the way through and then stop. Then we also have trigger mode. Purple is press it, let go and it'll play it. And yellow means you have to hold it down. So with this one here,
So we can change that on and off. And then we have our sync for each individual cell. I personally would always have that on unless you're using one shots that you're going to use manually, but you can still use one shots while they're synced as well. Nine times out of 10, you're probably going to want sync on. So there's your different types. And then we have size. So what we can do here is we can hold this pad here and then change this to different sizes. So we've got this here and we can do it live as well. So you can hear the bass lines change now. Click it. Back to normal. And you know what Browse does. One thing the rotary does as well is if you hold shift, it will say DA, which means deck A. If then you want to then change it to deck B, you can. You can see it flashing there, deck C, deck D. So that means you only need one F1 really to then be able to move from deck to deck to control them. Obviously, if you want to play things at once, then you can have more than one F1. Tractor can hold four F1s at the same time. So you can plug four in if you want to, if you want to be greedy. <laughs> then on the top of this, we then have master, edit, delete, color, pitch, speed, and MIDI. So what we can do here is do shift and turn this into the master deck. Hopefully you know what that means, but if not, it's essentially choosing where the master clock is. So at the moment, we've got the master clock here, but we could then relate it to here so we could choose and change this tempo bend here. Then we have edit. That means we have, so shift and then quantize, CP is copy, so let's just say I really like this. I press it, it flashes, it goes to PA. I can then scroll down to say page three, paste it in there, done. Next thing is cut, same thing, cut and paste. Then we have offset. So if we look at the rave alarm here, so we can hold this down and choose where we want it to start. Now, obviously it's a bit different on here because I'm using one shots, but we can then start it there. And obviously it will go all the way around, but this is my one now. And I can change that back just by clicking there. And then we have our nudge. What that means is I can nudge the grid. So if you see the grid, it's been shifted along so we can fine tune our starting points, our beat grids, that sort of thing. It will only move it along as one. It won't change the BPM, but you can do that down here. So if I click on there, you can then change it to here. If not, hold it down. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. Then we have our delete, which is shift, capture, delete. Now every other sequence you can do shift, quantize or whatever, and it will flash and you can do stuff. But because this is delete and destructive, it needs to make sure that's what you want to do. So we do shift, hold capture, and then delete. Next we have our colors, so we can change this all to different colors. Obviously you might not be able to see this on your screens, but you can check it out on the uh, software. So we can do shift, reverse, Let's just say I want to change sonar ping and then it gives us all these lovely colors and I can choose, I don't know, that green. And what you can do there is you can say all my drums and bass lines are red and then you can do all your mid range into your greens and yellows and whatever you want to do. You can match the frequency colors of tractor if you wanted to. Then we have our pitch. That means we can obviously change the pitch of the sound from 12 semitones down and up. But you have to have your key lock on first to take effect. So let's just say we're going to start this one. Click it back to normal. Now I do like to do this on my hi-hats. We're playing this. Sometimes they can be a bit low. or they might clash. So you can then make sure they don't clash with the snare drums and other pitches as well. Next we can do our speed. Now this means we can half time, we can double time and Quadruple time if we want to. So if we start this. So 
So you can see that that's a really cool little feature, and especially with drum and bass, that works really well because it gets half timed a lot anyway. And then we have our MIDI. Now I'm not going to go into MIDI today because that's, I think maybe less than five. I mean, I haven't written them yet, but yeah, let's just say five. Now let's go back to our capture. This is the best thing, seriously, that I absolutely love this. So if we load up a song by my mate Steve Mack, and then I'm, what I'm going to do is get rid of this and turn this into another remix set. We're going to sync it to 126, and I'm going to change this to 126 as well, just to make that easier. Now what Capture does is it takes samples out as part of a song, and it could be a small amount or a very large amount, and it's really, really cool. So first off, we need to make sure we beat grid this properly. So I'm just going to quickly do this. And then we're done. And all we need to do is take a loop. So what we do is hold capture. And you see where it says CL? That means catch a loop recorder. We don't want loop recorder. Our source is CB because it's in deck B. We're then going to press capture again. And it says four. We can change this to whichever one. And now you can see I'm controlling the loop size of deck B. So let's just say I want it as four. Click it down, and then press a cell you want it into deck A. Take off capture, and now look. It's as simple as that. That's all you need to do. You can just take different parts of different songs and use them as your own remix set in here, which I really like. Or if you were playing a song and you wanted this over the top, you could. Now, if we do do that, you need to make sure that your phase meter is back to normal. So it's a bit of a pain in the bum. So if we're just gonna play this section, but we want that over the top, we'd have this on sync, hit four, You can mix it over the top. Now you're going to have issues and that's going to be your phase meter. So check your phase meters out first. Make sure they're all synced and quantize as well. So that means we can catch it from anything. Now you could have 32 beats. And if we scroll through here, that's 15 seconds, but you can have actually have 48 second loops in here from these. So what we could do is go, let's get rid of that. Go back to one loop in. And let's go to, let's just say there, loop out, and then drag that in. So we've got quite a long sample there. Obviously, like I said, we could just drag the whole song in if we want to over the top. But when it comes to a loop, it has to be a maximum of 48 seconds. Don't know why, just does. So now that means you can take whatever you want from whatever you want. Uh, let's just say that this one here is it's 140 completely different genre as long as it's beat gridded properly it will still be fine for you to take out and then put it into your remix deck so again hold capture cb press capture let's just take four let's have a listen to it yeah let's go back to four and then i can just pop it over there take this off Et voila! So what I've quickly done is taken some samples from different um, songs and just to give you an idea of what you can do. And the last thing I want to show you is you can use the F1 whilst it's live to do all this stuff. So you don't have to use your mouse. You can literally just hold capture, capture something from a song whilst you're live in the mix. As long as you beat grid it properly, if you want to use a loop or you can use it as a one shot, it's entirely up to you. You can do your finger drummings, all sorts of stuff. If you do want to do your finger drumming, then take off your sync and quantize. Then turn it into a one shot and then you can have your trigger mode, whatever you want. Now, what's really nice is if we go to remix sets, these are your top level remix sets. If you click on here, this is your underneath. This is all the files underneath. So where we had Jungle Warrior, these are all the beats. And we can then drag these in to make our own remix sets. So if we go to one that has one shots here, so what we can do is we can take off our quantize and sync. 
can do stuff. You can do whatever you want. You can be the next Jeremy Ellis. It's not a problem at all. And let's just have a bit of fun here so we can go... So if we do find that something's too loud and we want to change the actual volume of it, down here you see it says gain, but you can do this on the fly. And what you can do here is if I press this, pull it down, hold shift, look at gain, it moves down. Same thing, hold shift, and you create more headroom. remember you can still use the mixer as normal and the loops so for example just press play here we can still loop it and have a effect over the top of it as well so there we have it a quite a quick whistle stop tour but in depth of the f1 for tractor